Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of today's Best Stock Picks. It is Friday morning, April 9th, 2021. We've got a lot to talk about today. We have two really hot sectors that we're going to take a look at. We have one really popular stock that exploded for the last five weeks that had really good news two days ago, or at least implied good news that we think is going down. <laughs> and we're going to show you why. We think that it was a classic case of sell the news. And I'm going to show you that stock. I'm going to show you what happened. And we're going to take a look at the next price action. We also have some news on a stock that went from $35 to upper $50, $60, went all the way back down to $25 and is in the news today. Again, I'm seeing a lot of online chatter about getting involved and how fast the stock can rally. But the bottom line is very much like the cannabis stocks, very much like most of the crypto stocks right now. Um, the news is on both sides of the market on this particular stock. It's still in a downtrend. I am not looking to buy it until it clears a certain level. I'm going to show you that level. Uh, it's pretty obvious. I don't know why everybody's getting excited about it. You're basically bottom fishing. And I do not bottom fish stocks. I don't trade penny stocks. We are only looking to trade stocks that have good earnings, reliable earnings, and not these one-off news stories just to get some excitement. We need to see order flow. We want to see smart money dipping in. We want to see smart money buying stocks with a commitment, and you need more than one day. You work your way out from the charts. There's one day worth of commitment, five days worth of commitment, and then you go all the way out to two weeks or a month worth of commitment. Then you start to have something special, and when you start to get in there and you're, you're buying before anybody else. You're really just hoping it moves in your favor. Why do that? It's much easier to trade stocks when it's already moving in your favor and you have proof. And there's actually one stock that I'm going to show you that had double its normal volume yesterday that broke out, which is a pretty exciting tech stock. But of course, we're going to lead the way with tech stocks surging, taking the stock market to new all-time highs. We're going to head over to the charts. Let's take a look. Oh, by the way, something very uh, important. I wanted to Along the lines of constantly wanting to try and help you as much as possible. First of all, obviously, I hope you click the thumbs up, but um, click over to the community tab. We have a new poll over there today uh, about what is your biggest trading challenge. Just if you have a second, click in there. Uh, I think I have three choices in there. If you don't have one of those three problems, um, there's another one in there where you can comment and what you believe is your biggest challenge. What do you believe is your biggest roadblock? to being a successful trader. What do you believe that when you're when you're trading stocks, what's stopping your account from going up consistently month after month? Click on the community tab uh, and just take a second to uh, give me your answer for that poll. Uh, also, click below the video. You'll see um, we get a ton of questions from members of our YouTube community who are full-time workers, uh, have another full-time job, but want to swing trade, don't understand where to start. Click below the video and you will see how to get access to my uh, brand new foundations and swing trading course. Uh, the offer that we have right now, it's only $3, but it's only available to the first 100 people who sign up. So click below the video and take a look at that as well. So let's turn it over to the charts. Really good week of trading. We had yesterday was um, uh, kind of like the, the top of uh, how bad March was and how much easier April has been. Um, you really need to be on top of your game right now. And when, when I say easier, I mean that there's opportunity. I never want to imply it's easy to make money because you need to develop the skills to first learn the difference between how to not lose money <laughs> and then get to the other side and actually learn how to hold your winners longer. You know, it's interesting. We talk about having an edge, having, having, um, having a reason to place a trade, having uh, justification. Say, if I accept risking money on this trade, what are the odds? What are the probabilities? What is the likelihood of me making money? So risk versus reward. And so many people get all bogged down on, oh, trading losses, trading losses. That's BS. <laughs> Quite honestly, all experienced traders, anybody who's been in the market long enough knows you need to flip that around. Trading losses are going to happen even on the best trading strategy. It's not about the losses. <laughs> it's about being around long enough in the stock market as a stock trader to understand how to make more in your winners, how to hold your winners, how to maximize the profitable trades so that when you have losses, they're like, ah, no big deal. I'll just find another trade to make it back. That's what real traders do. Real traders do not cry and whine about losses that they had last month. You need to let March go, get into April. There's money to be made right now. It's on short-term basis right now. We're looking for this follow-through to hold um, in, the, in individual stocks, the S&P 500 is obviously off to the races right now. 
However, <laughs> even with the S&P 500, we're going to take a look at the market indices right now and take a look at where they are for the day and for the week. It's a little bit frothy right now. From the majority of stocks that we've been watching, we're kind of more moving up our profit targets. Uh, we're moving up our trailing stop loss to hang on to some of those profits. I also do get a question once in a while about profit taking in the weekend and swing trades and the weekend. So the question really comes in is, do you not initiate new swing trades when the weekend comes up? And really the bottom line is if I like the idea, I like the idea. Unless something major is supposed to happen over the weekend, um, if I like the idea, Saturday and Sunday has nothing to do with that. I'm going to buy the stock if I like the stock pick. So let's head on over to the charts. Let's take a look at some of the ideas. We're going to take a look at the big tech stocks. We're going to take a look at Fubo uh, and some other stocks. And the stock I was talking about before that had good news that I think is going down is Walmart. We'll take a look at that, excuse me, in one second. All right. Okay, we're just going to share the screen. We're going to take a look at starting out. Uh, we're going to actually start out with the spy. We're going to start out with the market. Something that is reading the notes between the um, reading the notes within the within the uh, song. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten days in a row. Ten consecutive days of green candlesticks. Awesome, amazing, great. That is difficult to sustain for a new swing trade, for short-term trades, for one to two day trades, for even day trading, absolutely awesome. If you're a tape reader, if you understand how to, to read the tape in the market, you, have a, you need a reference point, you need a line in the sand. Generally speaking, for active day traders, you can do the same thing with swing trading, but for active day traders, it's that opening price. The longer your stocks stay above the opening price, the more they're, they're holding the bid. The smart money's making the commitment. They're buying stocks and holding those stocks, especially on an intraday basis. This is amazing with the SPY creating new all-time highs. It's just now not the time if you're looking to trade ETFs to be buying this. Right now is the time to be moving up your trailing stop if you bought this bullish U-turn back here, which is one of our favorite strategies. So we're going to take a little bit deeper look into yesterday. And you can see that for the most part, everything is green except for energy stocks. But we talked about that uh, four or five weeks ago. So hopefully you're on top of that curve with us. So if we get into semiconductor stocks, which have been the strongest, they're actually pausing at a new breakout level, which is actually pretty interesting. So again, just, just to have your frame of mind, let's zoom out a little bit here. You can see that now we've gotten up to this level, bullish gap, bullish gap, bullish gap, pause. This is setting up for another run next week. And that's really what great trading is, is setting up your ideas for the following week. And again, sticking with NASDAQ, again, bullish gap, but this time into resistance, still looking great though. Uh, XLK as well, which also broke out the semiconductor ETF, uh, excuse me, the uh, <laughs> technology ETF. So everything looks good. However, there's a difference between, and again, I want to come back on the screen. There's a difference between picking a side and picking a spot. Right now, the side is obvious. We want to be bullish. We should be bullish. If you're not getting long when the stocks are at all time high, I don't, honestly, I don't know when you would. However, we talk about it all the time. If this is the optimal entry and this is a realistic profit target, so if this is the entry and you're going to justify the risk here and this is the profit potential, I want to try and make sure it's on the screen. If we are all the way up here in what the stock normally does, if 80% of the profit potential has already been quote unquote eaten up on the normal swing in the stock, that turns a swing trade into a day trade where you're going to day trade it one more time for what we call the bullish echo, maybe two days, like we're going to talk about Square and Pay uh, PayPal in a second. Um, then you wait for the pause for the next move. Best case scenario pushes up and pauses on light volume, like we said the SPY did for the last two days and we got the rally, or pull back and pause like um, Mara did for two days, and actually X is pulling back for a couple, a little bit right now as well. So let's head back into the stock. So what I'm, what I'm really teaching you uh, is to be aware first of what a great idea looks like, but then you need to understand risk reward. How much risk do I need to take for how much potential reward? And does that trade make sense? Now, most smart traders, more hardworking traders, new members into our community, understand that they're okay with taking risk, but you need to take the right risk, which means that there's acceptable profit for the trade you're about to take. And that's really the last piece, whether you're in the boot camp or the swing trade program with us, 
that's probably the last piece of the puzzle for a lot of traders is really understanding how to time entries for the right potential for the risk you need to take. And then you need share size and position sizing on top of that, which we also show you in, um, in our program as well. So let's head on over to the charts. Let's, let's continue along the lines. Uh, so we're going to show you what we mean about the profit potential. We're obviously going to talk about Apple, which we've been talking about this week. We talked about the breakout. We talked about we needed to see it go well bid. It's now gone well bid. The problem now is the stock has gone from 119 to 130. And if you look to the left, this is really the first bullish move for the stock. So we're going to be looking to trade the day trade, the bullish echo one more day. Look for a pause. And you're going to see a theme among these stocks, Facebook. Facebook actually did pause. Now it's traded below the open two days in a row. We can actually continue to start to look long. I would prefer right now for Facebook to pull back a little bit, 277 to 316. That's a $40 move. Even if it pulls back around $10, I think I'd be a little bit more comfortable with getting long Facebook right now. Microsoft has just been on fire for the last four or five days. And this is what you want to see. You want to see a pause just prior to the breakout. Again, a little bit extended over the last seven to eight days, but Microsoft is still along. Again, I prefer for the stock to pull back somewhere around 247, 247.50 in that area. I want the stock to take a breath and then go. So we're really talking about in these large tax uh, stocks right now that we want to see them pause. We could day trade them if they're still above the opening price. A new swing trade needs the stock to consolidate just a little bit right now. Um, Amazon as well. We've been staying away from Amazon. You can see here, zooming out to the larger chart, it really has been stuck in this range since last July. I've had this price 32.50 <laughs> since last July, uh, maybe last September. It hasn't gotten out of that level. Uh, I can day trade the stock right now. I can look for some good opportunities, especially if you see this here on the hourly chart. Very, very clean over the last couple of weeks. It's been more of a short-term trade looking for it to finally get out of that bigger window. But what's really exciting is the big large cap tech stocks leading the rally. They were lagging. The market and the spy was going up for a while without them. If these stocks stay here and join the party, man, this could be something special. It could really be something special. Even Netflix, if you didn't catch the post that we made early in the week in the community, uh, again, click over to the community tab for today's poll. 560 is the level that we've been watching Netflix, which seems like forever above 560. And then a bullish close of 560 would trigger new uh, new trade setups in Netflix. One stock I want to do point out today, uh, Sono, S-O-N-O, uh, really good bullish price action yesterday. But more importantly, is this something that good tape readers need to do? Double normal volume yesterday nearing a breakout level. So we're looking for this above 40 three in that area today. All right, I'm going to rattle off some other stocks that we're going to be taking a look at today. PayPal and Square, two stocks that we are looking at to trade the bullish echo today. So really more of a day trade coming out of this consolidation. Again, you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row, the stock has gone well bid. That means that it's hard to sustain that move. So we're looking for one more day of buying then a pause, and then a trade up to, I believe we said the 275 level. If you did not get long the breakout, that's my point. We talked about getting long the breakout. It's a little bit past that right now. I still do like the 275. Square, same thing. Square, actually, we said we like Square over 250. This is the first trade above 250. Now we need Square to stay there. Again, one day worth of buying, five days worth of buying, two weeks worth of buying, a month worth of buying. You're looking for that commitment. These tech stocks look really, really good. Uh, both of those are obviously still benefiting from the Bitcoin uh, news. So we have some stocks in the communication services that are turning around from longer term trends. Uh, you know, actually, let me talk about Fubo first. Uh, I promise to talk about that. Um, Fubo actually had news. And <clears throat> you can see the stock actually went from 20 to 62, back down to 20, back down to 52, up to 52. Uh, Pops on exclusive rights with Qatar World Cup. I don't know how much earth shattering news this is for everybody to be getting excited about it online. For me personally, I'm not looking at this stock until it gets above 25. I want to see a longer term commitment from the smart money. Deep pockets pushing the stock up. And only then will we start to, uh, me personally, start to look to dip my toes in there. Uh, some other stocks that have been strong that we're going to keep an eye on today. Snap, again, Snap, we're looking for a bullish echo. Great call in our community about this trend line break yesterday. I'm proud of everybody in the boot camp. Uh, Twitter, you've been listening to me talk about Twitter all week, and you can see the last three days, whether you're day trading it or a short-term swing trade, Twitter has been strong. But we did have 72 as the resistance level, so now we've gotten up to that 72, looking for that to pause a little bit. 
Uh, SE is another one that broke a trend line. So really, we're setting up some trades for next week. I do want to talk about Walmart. Uh, if you did not happen to see the spike earlier in the week, which is this move here, uh, with the news about Flipkart, the ironic thing is that should have given the stock some action, right? But what ended up happening was after this rally from the beginning of March, the stock has now closed below the open twice. And I'm looking to see that stock as a sell the news situation as opposed to buy the news situation. Okay. And it's going to be interesting. We actually sold our, um, we had a new swing trade for the swing trade community in there uh, on the breakout down here. Uh, and it moved in our favor pretty strongly. But then that news came out and it kind of stalled the stop out. And I'm like, this just smells like sell the news. And so we took a small profit in that and we're looking for a new trade. So that's an interesting one to watch. Uh, Oracle, actually, really good, clean pause after a good momentum rally. Looking for Oracle to get some follow through today as well. Uh, VUZI, sticking with the technology sector, really, really good, clean stock that has just been pushing and pausing, pushing and pausing. And now it's broached new levels. But again, here's the thing you need to understand. One, two, three, four days well bid in a row. It's hard to sustain that five, six, seven day. So really what today is, today's a shorter term, maybe two day trade, punch up, look for a pause or even a pullback, and then looking for a rally. So there's a there's a lot to look at today. One uh, other one that I want to talk about is TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx continues to test the $70 level. One more day, well bid, close above that level and a pause then we'll be looking for a new trade above there as well. Uh, BLNK, one of the few standout stocks uh, that's actually trading well in the uh, in the EV arena. Um, so this is kind of the first trade out of the uh, move to the downside. It clearly broke the downtrend, and now it actually had a pretty good move to the upside. It needs to stay above 44. If it stays above 44, then we're looking for a run to 56. Man, there's a lot to talk about today. There's profit taking, there's new ideas, there's sectors that are still heading down. Um, I'm really mostly managing existing swing trades right now. There's a few opportunities that we just discussed today. Absolutely looking for the bullish echo to find some of these super strong stocks like Square, PayPal, Microsoft, Facebook, looking for one more push. Microsoft actually did pause above that level. Facebook closed below the open two days in a row. So I'm kind of looking for those stocks to stay there for a day or two before the next move higher. They've been on fire for the last two weeks, uh, but plenty of opportunity here as well, both the day trade and swing trade side of the market too. Don't forget about watching X. It's pulled back for a couple of days. We're looking for it to get back above that most recent support level after a really solid momentum move to the upside. If we see that kind of price action, we'll get back involved. Roku actually woke up as well. So if you find these videos helpful, I try and do my best every day to put you in a position, at least give you some ideas. Uh, if you could please do me a favor, click down and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what your challenges are. Click on the community tab, answer that poll, and click below this video to, uh, to grab your um, access to my swing trading program. I hope to see you on the other side. Have a great day trading. And uh, just have an amazing, amazing weekend. Take care, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.